Hey friends and welcome back to Jory with Jen. I am so excited because as you can see, I am in design mode and I'm got sparkling going on. <laughs> it makes me so happy and I cannot even apologize. Sorry for my enthusiasm, but I can't apologize because you guys look at what I'm playing with. I'm playing with sparkle. How can you not be happy? <laughs> so I'm just so enthusiastic. And so I'm back with um, some design mode gen right at the moment. <laughs> um, I am doing another Lariat um, inspired necklace. So if you're interested in a Lariat style necklace that we call a lasso Lariat, um, then stay tuned because that's what we're jumping into. So hello, everybody. Welcome back to Joy with Jen. And of course, I am Jen. It's so good to be back with a little bit more design mode. You know, um, if you guys follow my channel, you know, I've been really working in this Jewelry 101 series. And that's like another part of my brain, right? And um, I've been taping and taping that and rolling them out every couple of days here. But I have been working on... Uh, uh, taping and the editing um, over the last couple of weeks and I'm continuing that series and so I'm like missing design and so I have these beads that I got from BB Craft about I don't know month ago or so I did the unboxing and so I wanted to do another video with um, using some of those beads that I got um, in a lariat style and of course this is Valentine inspired. Yay. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Um, I cannot, I cannot. Okay. So welcome. Let's get all of our housekeeping out of the way. Welcome my fellow beaters out there, one and all. And thank you guys so much for your continued support and your constant encouraging kind words. You know who you are. I know who you are. Um, you guys are just amazing and beautiful humans. And I, I can't tell you how much I truly am <laughs> growing attached and building relationships with you. It really warms my heart and I welcome it so much. It's what I need. So thank you guys for your continued support. And if you're just stumbling across my channel and you're brand new, welcome aboard. Hello, I am Jen. And if you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, you better smash it now because you don't want to miss uh, what I got coming up um, in the next couple of weeks here as we continue in my Jewelry 101, especially if you're a beginner or a hobbyist and you really are interested in having a deep dive understanding into jewelry components and findings because that's what we are in the middle of rolling out here um, on my channel. But we're also still doing some designing and and all kind of other stuff. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join my world of all things jewelry. Okay, guys. So we are continuing with our Lariat inspired Valentine theme necklace at the moment. So this is really cool. Okay. So I've got obviously the beading out of the way, but here's what's really cool about this necklace, you guys. I am mixing metals. Now, I am going to do a video because I just want to, <laughs> but I don't know who thinks about what kind of trend and who doesn't. I do. And you know what? I don't post enough about that. So I'm going to probably roll out in the next couple of days. I'm going to do a what's trending because I've been doing my research. <laughs> and if you guys have been doing yours, awesome. Thumbs up, you know, snaps for us. Um, but for those of us that are truly um, in a business and uh, a designer as I am, uh, you know, I do try to pride myself on staying up to date in trends. And what is trending is cool. And so it's coming off the runway in Milan and what's coming off the runway in Paris and what's coming off the runway in the upcoming uh, New York Fashion Week. And then we have Miami Fashion Week. And all of that fashion trend does lend over here doesn't it, right? And our accessories and our jewelry department. So of course I stick to what I love and love to make anyway, as I'm sure many of my fellow beaters and designers out there, you would agree. Of course we do. But 
I also like to try to stay on trend and put out there what I think people are going to want and wear and not to mention, you know, yours truly. <laughs> you know, I like to be a little, you know, stylish and a little bit of bling here and there if I say so. <laughs> you guys, I cannot. I'm telling you. It's the day. <laughs> I've got all this pink and this sparkle in, in front of me, and I am not apologizing for my silliness. I am so enthusiastic about it and am so excited because, you know, light bulb, and, you know, I thought of another way to design a lariat. And so, anyway. Okay, guys. Jen, pull it together. <laughs> so, I'll put up some trending stuff. But back to my point is, what's going on here is I'm mixing metals. Mixing metals is huge trending this year. So I am going to start right here with this lariat and just a subtle, very subtle mixing of rose gold and silver with this gorgeous pink bicone. Now, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I'm gonna pull this out for you because I would just not be right if I did not. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull this way up so that you guys can see these bicones and the shine is just absolutely stunning. And then look at what I have done in between. I have used rose gold and silver spacers in between every 10 or so beads. Then the rest of my pattern, which we'll get into the supplies in a second, are these adorable three millimeter rondel faceted beads. And I've got those interlacing. And when I put it out, you'll see, I'll show you. But you guys, okay, so we're mixing models. And I think this is going to be cool. So let's get into it. So how do you put a lariat like this together? Well, we're going to go through it for you beginners. If you are not familiar with crimping, putting on connectors, making dangles, um, or using wire guardians, Head over to, you're going to see me do it, but head over to my playlist for a slower, more in-depth, detailed explanation in my Jewelry 101 series playlist. Jewelry 101 playlist videos. I have created um, all of this 101 stuff um, and broken it right down for all you beginners and really teaching you how to do these different um techniques and our findings and components that we add into our beading. So just an FYI for you beginners, if I'm moving too fast for you, don't shy away, don't worry, because this is one of the easiest kind of necklaces to make, I'm telling you. And head over to that playlist if you need a little better understanding of how to deal with the findings and stuff. So I am going to make what I'm hoping to be around like a 35-inch lariat. And what we're going to do at the end is we are going to use this too cute. I'm going to pull this way up for you guys have to see this. This is a little connector that is a heart. And it has two loops on the bottom. And so we are going to be putting this at the bottom of our necklace. And we are going to be putting some dangles and some chain there and mixing our metals. So that is the idea, but we're doing a lasso. And what a lasso effect is, guys, think about like anything like with equestrian, right? So, you know, the lasso, right? So it's a loop. And it's designed to kind of give you an idea, like we are going to be making like a loop and we can do it any size we want. And then our loop um, is here. And then the rest of our necklace is designed to feed through here and then come down so the necklace can be worn in a multitude of ways. It's super, super cool style. So let's get into supplies, guys. So for our supplies, of course, we'll need a tape measure, obviously, a lasso. I feel like it's a little better to do it on the mat than the beading board because it's just so long. It's so much going on. But do whatever you feel comfortable with, but certainly have a tape measure. The beading wire I'm using, guys, is I'm going to use the 49 strand. And I'm using the 49 strand because of the delicacy and lightweightness of these gorgeous beads. And it's a 0.018 inch, the Beadalon brand, in gold. You can use any wire you want. But for flexibility, if you're using a lightweight bead, I would recommend 
a 19 or 49 strand. So that's what I'm using there. We're going to be using some chain, and I've got silver and rose gold, and they are both um, oval twisted curb chain in uh, stainless steel, and then this is the rose gold, which they are both lead and nickel free. We have our little um, connector, and then I've got a head pin. We'll need four to make our little dangles. And then I am using these AB Finish beads that are a, um, these are a Rondell, uh, these are Rondell, no, they're not. They are crystal, crystal faceted. And these are from, um, from, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself all twisted in my brain because I'm trying to remember what these are called. These are the crystal AB Finish faceted, and these are in a 10 millimeter. That's what these are. And so I'm just going to use one or two of those for our beads. We're just using three types of beads. I'm using the six millimeter bicones. These are faceted and they are in pink with an AB finish and they are six millimeter and they are the Honey Handy brand from BB Craft and they're gorgeous. And just make sure I got that right. Yeah, the Honey Handy and their Electroplate glass with faceted uh, bicones with the pink AB finish. So that's the bicones we're using. And then the other beads that I got that I really like from um, the BB Craft unboxing I did is um, I've got them here, uh, what I'm not using at the moment, but I fed on in between, and you can see one right there. These are um, also the Honey Handy brand. They are... Uh, three millimeter faceted pink mix rondels. Okay. And they came in the pink mix and you can kind of see here in my tray that it's just this beautiful spring palette of colors and that's what I'm using. And they're just adorable. And they came in a, a huge pack. It was like, I don't know, a hundred or 150 in the pack, but these are the three millimeter uh, Rondell faceted in the pink mix. And so those are the three beads I'm using. Now, I will put links in the description with a discount code for you guys. If you're interested in these beads and making something very similar to this, um, you can take advantage of that discount code and then uh, follow the links over to their site to grab these beads. They still have them. Um... Yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, just look as I'm laying it out. I mean, this is so gorgeous. I love these bicones. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And that is, and then, as I did I mention the little flower spacers? So the flower spacers we're using in rose gold and silver. So I'm mixing my metals and my chain. Whoops. Well, that's fun. See, it goes to show you. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so like electrified right now because I've got so much bling on my mat that it's making me dump my beads all over the place. <laughs> okay, Jen, pull it together. So I'm mixing my metals in the chain. <laughs> I'm mixing my metals in my little daisy flower spacers. And I'm mixing my metals um, by using um, rose gold wire guardians. I've got some rose gold jump rings and rose gold uh, crimp covers. But then I have silver head pins with the ball end on it, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I cannot. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Oh, you know what? Why not, though? You know, and it might be the wine. I've got a glass of wine over here. You know what? It's a Friday night, um, and this is what I'm doing. I'm I'm jumping on the camera, and I'm having fun with you guys um, and my beads. That's that's how exciting my evening is all by myself. <laughs> Just me, my beads, and my wine, and, of course, you guys. So, anyway, it might be the wine. <laughs> um, at any rate, my lovies. Um, so what we've got also is a bead stopper. You'll need a bead stopper for a project like this. So let me try to pull it together while I sit here and hopefully also entertain you. <laughs> and let's pull it together and go ahead and put our necklace together. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut my wire and strung my beads, obviously. 
So what I've done is cut, I don't know, probably a 50 inch piece of wire or so. I think it's probably around 50 inches because I think I'm at about 35 inches worth of beads, but we'll do final measurements at the end of the video. And then what you do is just go ahead and string them on. It's the fun part and also the longest part. Uh, but we still have plenty left to do here. Um, and then all I've done is just kind of decided on a pattern. And so the pattern that I chose, you guys, is I went and I did 10 runs of the six millimeter bicones. And then each 10, I put a both a silver and gold daisy spacer and then one of the three millimeter rondelles. So like I have spacers, rondelle, and then spacers, rondelle, spacers, rondelle. And I did that throughout the entire pattern, okay? And that was just what I decided on. So it's kind of cool is as you can see here. So like when it's laying on the neck, like um, a rondelle and then the spacers, they will be next to each other like that. It's kind of cool. So that was just the pattern, but you can do any pattern you want. And I've strung them on. Now, in order to make a lasso, this is what we basically do. Is you string on your beads. And then when you're at the end of your string and you determine what size you want your loop, you first feed on Hopefully, let me pull it right up here for you guys. So you can see there's my crimp tube right there. Can you see it right here? That's my crimp. Okay. And then, so I fed on my crimp and now I fed on beads until I just kept feeding on my beads until, and I kept going like this to figure out, you know, how big or small I wanted, I want my little lasso to be. And that's, again, just a design aesthetic. So you can make this any size you want. You can go big, small, whatever. And then just stop beading when you've decided that you've put on enough beads where you meet your crimp. And when you fold it over like that, that that's the size that you want. Now, with that said, the reason I determined that this is the size that my lasso is going to be is because I took my little charm... You know, I took the end of my beads and then I, you know, my biggest bead here, which is, you know, 10, 10 millimeter. I mean, it's not big. Just to make sure that they will feed through. Okay. And that's all. That's all it is. It's just really simple. So you just simply put on your crimp and then as you're getting to the end, you just feed on your beads until you're satisfied with the size loop that you want to make. Okay. Because we're going to end up getting rid of this piece of wire. And we will just wind up with one um, piece of wire on the end, one continuous strand of wire. Okay, so basically, guys, what we do is I am now going to take the end of my wire and I am going to feed it through my crimp. And there you are. Okay, there's my crimp. And if I can get it through one of these three millimeter rondelles, that would be great. That's why I chose this 49 strand wire, 0.018 inch. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, lovely. And it did. Okay, and so then basically, I'm now holding onto the long string of my beads and I'm holding this tail stationary, okay? And I'm taking and using the long strand, and that's what I'm pulling. Okay? There we go. So that's what I'm, I'm pulling. Now, something to bear in mind is that when now that we've done that, don't worry about your beads being completely, like, flush or not and having a little gap there. Um, that is perfectly normal, even if, you know, your beads are even off-center a little bit like this, because you can also use you know, some tarnish-free wire, you can use colored wire, it's fine, okay? Not a big deal. On a style like this, this would be normal, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I am going, because I'm gonna put a crimp cover there, I just need a little bit of space, but I also wanna make sure 
that my lasso is kind of tight, to be honest. Now, we always talk about making sure we don't crack our beads, especially on glass bicones like this. We don't want to crack them um, because, you know, people will be, you know, putting, you know, the necklace in and out of it. We do want to have a smidge of movement there. So that's why I'm just like, you can see I'm holding it here, but I'm also kind of just like going like this just to make sure that I have a little bit of movement in my beads. That That's exactly what I want, okay? So keeping my wires apart, let me go ahead and crimp this off. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. what should I do? I'm thinking I'm going to use my crimper tool today. And... There's no reason, just because, just because I feel like it. And let me get that crimped off. And twisty, turvy, and fold you in half. And let me grab a crimp cover. And put you on there. And chain nose, there you are. Don't you guys love beating. Oh my God. It makes me so happy. This is making me very happy. You guys, <laughs> it really is. These beads are so gorgeous. I am most definitely ordering some more of these. I'm not even kidding. I bet you any amount of money. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I am going to get back on their site and I am going to be ordering some more because these are just gorgeous and they have them a lot of colors. This is the pink AB finish, as I said. Um, I'm just going to grab my flush cutters. Let's get rid of that tail now. Um, but I bet they've got more colors. So that's what we have now, guys. Okay, so this is at the very end of our necklace, right? So let me make, do I have my beads separate? I do. Let me make sure I pull that way up for you. Okay, so this is what we have. So I have my little lasso now. Okay. And so now what we're going to do, super easy, guys, is most of this is going to be out of camera for a second because it's so long, is I'm just grabbing my bead stopper now. I'm going to go ahead, remove it, push it down a little bit more, and I'm just shaking my beads, shaking them down so that I can just make sure that I'm flush up here. Let me just tweak that one more time right there. Okay, perfect. You know, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. Let me just adjust the camera. I don't want to give you motion sickness here. Okay, sorry. Okay. Now, in a long lariat necklace, a really good idea, like I mentioned in the last video, is to go ahead and put that right there. And make sure you're flush where you need to be here and then go ahead and coil it like a kind of like a snake or a rope okay so as i'm doing that you see how um, the beads there's some gaps here right see the gaps there so that's what i'm doing is now i'm gonna put them in a coil and go round and round and as i'm doing that i'm pushing them down And I'm going to continue to coil and let them just drop down as I go in my coil. And now I can remove my bead stopper. I'm going to hold that there. Now, why the reason I did that, um, and for you fellow beaters, you're fully aware, right? It's because we need some fluidity and movement in our beads. These are glass bicones. This is a lariat. It's going to be you know, dangling around and being constantly put in and out of the lasso. So, you know, you want to make sure you have movement in your beads. Always make sure you have movement in your beads. Um, and they're not too tight. We don't want them to be so tight that, you know, they're going to break. Okay? But we do want them to be snug. So in order to accomplish that, I find this coiling method... And I think many of my fellow beaters out there do the same thing. And this is just kind of ensuring that you not only have no gaps now, so you've checked yourself down here. We're all coiled up. And so we know we've got a proper bend and movement in our beads while we now go ahead and crimp this up here. So next step is, and I've got a little bit too much wire, so I am going to get rid of some of this wire, you guys. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is let's feed on a crimp. 
And then we're going to feed on a wire guardian. And then I'm going to add that connector. And again, if you're a beginner go um, and you don't know, uh, please feel free to um, check out that Jewelry 101 playlist. I have a great video on there about wire guardians. Um, they are super easy to use. But at any rate, so I've got my wire guardian on and I need to get my little connector. There you are. So I'm going to put my connector and I'm going to feed that on right now. And I have jump rings too. I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not. Um, I think we will, but we'll see. I don't know. We're, 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 I didn't pre-design this other than in my head. <laughs> and as we all know, sometimes what's in our head does not come out on the mat. <laughs> so um, I'm just feeding my tail, obviously, guys, back through that crimp. And then I'm going to just take it through my first spy comb there. And then I'll grab my tail, make sure my wires are not crossed, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull. Um, so I'm not sure. So we might, you know, be able to, you know, eliminate some supplies. I'm not sure, but I've got them out in case and we need them. Okay, very good. So now we've got that there. Let me crimp off that crimp tube. I'm using crimp tubes today. Two by twos. Where is it? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Make sure that looks okay. Alrighty. So I'll give him a squeeze. And then let me flip flop you around. And then I will fold you. Excelente. Perfection. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my tail now that I've crimped myself off there. And I'll get right in there with my flush cutters. Get rid of that wire. Okay, very good. Let me put a crimp cover on that. This is going to be so cool. I'm just going to put a crimp cover over that crimp tube. Oh my gosh, you guys, I ordered the magical crimper. You know, that doggone thing has been sold out everywhere for like, I don't even know how many weeks I've been trying to get it, probably three, four. And finally, and where do you think I got it, you guys? Where do you think it, the only place I could literally find it in stock, I'm not joking, is Amazon. I mean, Beta Holly, Jewelry Supply, Michaels, everybody, everybody has been out of it. And I use, that's just naming a few. I mean, I, I have a lot of resources, you know, and I'm telling you, I was like, are you kidding me? But finally, it came available yesterday and I ordered it and I think I got it. It's in my mailbox. I'm so excited. I'm going to be able to do... The magical crimping, the reason I'm talking about that is because it's going to eliminate the crimp covers um, when I don't feel like doing them. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm so excited about the magical crimp. I know you, a lot of you out there, my fellow um, beaters use them, and oh my God, I, I love them. I, it, it is the best invention. So there we go. We've got our little connector little cute little heart connector he's on the wire guardian and now there is our bottom now what we're gonna do guys is let me make sure it keeps flopping the other way so let me go like this and undo it and twist you back the other way and then back down there we go okay very good thank you now lay Left. Okay, so guys, let's um, do our dangles and our chain. And I'm not sure if we're going to do three or four. So I want to do the mixed metal. This is going to be so cool. So I have um, the same size and style of chain 
in two colors here. So we've got the four millimeter oval twisted and then oval um, in silver and rose gold. So this is so cool. Okay, so I'm just laying my chain out flat. And what I'm going to do now is I am going, because we're going to do like a little tassel, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heavier wire cutters. I'm done crimping. There you are. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to do on the bottom here, I want to do um, a couple of lengths of chain. Oh, that's, that's exactly why I grabbed the jump rings because that's what we need to put on there so we don't have to do wire guardian. So I want to do as many links as I can get on here with my dangles at the bottom of the chain, okay? So that's exactly what we're doing now. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I can grab my tape measure, but I was kind of like honestly going to eyeball it, but we can do it this way. So maybe I'll go like, okay, so this is like one inch right there and let me cut that there and these have just about had it I need to get some new wire cutters too I have been cutting so much chain okay so there's a one inch piece and then I'm going to do a one inch piece over here okay so I'm just alternating between my colors and cutting them at the same time. So there is my one inch piece of silver and one inch piece of rose gold. Okay, and so now maybe I'll do like a one and a half inch. So I'm just gonna put this up here and then I'll do like a one and a half inch piece. there and then a one and a half inch piece of the rose gold and I think maybe three is gonna be good on each so one and a half inch piece of the rose gold be about right there okay and then I guess we'll go two inches. And that'd be about right there. So there's a two inch. And we'll do the same in the silver. So I just cut as you heard. <laughs> Um, but I will put it in the description for you guys along with the links and all the supplies we're using. Um, I just cut, what, a one, one and a half, a one inch, a one and a half inch, and a two inch piece. And so I've got a two inch, a one and a half, and then a one. And then I have a two inch, one and a half, and then a one just kind of alternating my colors. So let's stop right there and then let's see how this plays out. And if we need to add more chain, we can add more chain. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab a jump ring and let's get that open. I need two pair of pliers for that. There you are. So I'm gonna open up my jump ring and attach my chain now on the same order that I cut it the longest to the shortest. So there's that two inch, and then the rose gold is in one and a half inch, and then the silver in the one inch. 
okay? And that is kind of the cool cascading effect that we have. That's pretty cool. And, oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it on each side. That's right, duh. So I'm gonna do it again. So then we have rose gold and then silver and then a rose gold. Okay, very good. Okay, and now I am going to add this jump ring onto my little heart. And let's go ahead and close that up nice and secure because that is itty bitty little chain. Don't want that chain coming off. Okay, very good. And that is what we have. That is so cool. Look at the, how cool. You guys, this mixed metal is awesome. I love it. And I am more, most certainly going to be doing more of that. But you know what I wish I had? I wish I had a smaller jump ring. And then we're going to be putting our crystals down here. So I wish I had a smaller. So let me reach across the table and see, do I have a smaller rose gold jump ring? Because, you know, I don't know. I mean, we could, I guess, you guys, use a silver. You know, because I know I have a four millimeter. I have a four millimeter in antique copper and in gold and in antique gold. And in silver, but I don't have it in rose gold. I mean, I guess it's just a design aesthetic. Let me grab these little four millimeters in um, the silver. These are stainless steel. Um, and let me see if we broke up that chain and just did three on each side, if I could fit it on there. So before I even take that off, I'm going to check, guys, on my other loop here on my connector to see if this will even go through. Because these are kind of thick little loops. Now, see, it does go on. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now, with the chain, I'm not sure if we can close it. But let's give it a shot and let's try it out. Okay? We might as well. There are no rules. So let me get this guy off. I can find where I have you closed. There you are. Okay, so let's give it a shot and try because I prefer to just do the three and three and use a smaller jump ring with the dangles on the bottom. That was kind of what I was wanting, but again, we can modify as we go. That's what we do. So let me reorganize my little chain here. Okay, so there's that one and then this one. Okay, so then we have, okay, so we have gold, silver, and then gold, and then this three goes together. Okay, so I am going to grab this jump ring and I am going to feed on all three links of my chain again. And that cascading effect. So by I putting them on as I cut them by size. And then let's put this on back on our little heart and see if we can get it closed. I think we might can do it. Okay, I like this better. We can get this closed. This is going to be a great day. <laughs> These are so thick. Okay, I'm going to have to go around the other direction of the camera right now, unfortunately, guys. If you can see me or not, you probably know how to do this anyway. It's fine. Um, these are so heavy gauge. These four millimeters. 
they are so difficult to close, so I'm gonna struggle a second if I can't get it right in front of me. Oh, yeah, yay. Okay, let's see, what are we doing here? And it just came apart. Okay, what's happening is I need to turn it because I'm right hand dominant. We're gonna get it, guys. The other way. And I'm gonna change position of my players to my correct dominant right hand. Okay, with my bent nose. And see if I can get this guy closed. Okay, let's see. I wish I had my other bent nose pliers in front of me, but I do not know where I have put them. Just a little challenging because it's a it's like a 20 gauge jump ring. But I'll tell you something, that ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Okay, so see see how much better. Don't you guys agree? Like the smaller jump ring? That looks way better. So we'll repeat that over here on the other side. That's so cool. Okay, so let me get you open. And then we'll put our dangles on the bottom, measure it, and see what we have. We're almost done. Yay. Yay. Okay, so we'll do gold. Rose gold and then silver and then rose gold. And let's see the direction we need to put this on here. Okay, so it needs to go this direction. So let me feed that on there. Keep a hold of that and see if we can get this closed. There we go. Okay, excellent. And now, there we go. Look at how cool this is. That looks so cool, you guys. Love this. Love this. Hope you guys are enjoying frolicking with me on a Friday night. <laughs> or whenever you come across this video and you want a little entertainment. Okay. Now... I've got my little dangles here. Let me get this stuff out of the way off the mat since we're gonna be measuring in a second that we do not need any of this anymore. And obviously I keep flinging things, so let me clean up the mat a little bit there. Okay, so you guys, let's see what we have here. So, what we are going to do is just decide where we want to hang our crystals. So I'm feeling like maybe like, I'm wondering if it would even be cool to have a crystal on each one, but I was just thinking of going the each end and then the middle. So I feel like I want to do like this one here. Let's do this one here for... Um, this larger crystal. We'll just feed that in the last link of our chain. And just close up your loops, guys, to where they're nice and flush. This is, especially, you know, because you can use any kind of chain you want, but I'm using um, four millimeter, and it is um, very thin. So easily, um, your dangles or anything can easily slip off. Oh, that's just too cool. Okay, so then let's go over here. Let's go to these bottom two. And let's put on... Well, we'll just do it one at a time. I'm just going to grab one of the little bicones. And let's put that on this link. And then we'll close that up. And then let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Let's go to this one here for this. 
Okay. See, it's coming out, you know what I mean? I mean, it was in my head and it's coming out. I love it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I bet you that would be so cool. Look how cool that is, you guys. That is super awesome. Look at how cool this is. Can you see how cool this is? It's just too cool. I've never, ever made a lasso before. And I've, uh, lariat, and then a lasso lariat. And I've never done like this kind of a cool style like this on the end with this kind of a cool little heart, little connector. That's really super cute. And to be honest with you, we can actually add that other one. So since I've got a head pin here and I have that other bead, let me just put you on there and let's just make one more dangle and we'll call it a day. Since I've already got it out here, might as well. I also have a um, playlist up, guys, how to make a simple loop for a dangle. Um, or video up in that, um, in my basics playlist. So if you're not sure how to make a little dangle like that really quickly and simple, simple little loop, um, you can find that video in that playlist of mine, that Jory 101. So then let's see where he needs to go. Okay, so I see this back here, this little piece of gold. Could go there. You really can go anywhere. Let's put them here. Let's see how that looks. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so pretty. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. And maybe you guys grabbed a glass of wine of your own. <laughs> or a, a glass of, of Coke or whatever. And just had a little Friday frolic fun. <laughs> That's what my mom used to always say, Friday frolic. It's Friday frolic time. All righty, beautiful. Okay, my friends, let's see what we have. So by putting that fourth one on, that's what we have, you guys. Look at how gorgeous this is. Isn't that beautiful? With that, again, it's like mixed media, right? It's like that mixed metal. And I'm telling you, that looks cool. The silver and the rose gold, that's a hit. And you know what? It picks up throughout the whole necklace with the spacers. The pink with the AB finish just lends itself to that mixed metal. I mean, that is cool. And so let's do a final measurement. And then I will show you guys um, what we will not measure our dangle we will measure just starting at the lasso and um ending at the dangle there you are okay let's see what we have let me push this totally together and let's see here okay guys so we have A, what is 16 and 16? 32? So we have a 32 inch lariat, which is actually a great size. That's a great size lariat. So this is so cool. So check this out, you guys. So basically, right, what happens is, by the way, you can wear this any way you want. There is really no rule. So what's so cool, I'm trying to get this whole thing in camera. Like, Look, guys, like it goes like way back here. You can literally wear it like this around the neck, right? Because like a lariat is like a scarf, right? That's where the, I think, origination of the, the term came from. I could be wrong on that. But it picked up um, decades ago, and it's such a classic style, but it's also seasonless and ageless. And the idea behind a lariat is to not have a clasp and to be worn like a scarf any way you want. So... You can wear it like this on the neck. How cool is that? It, there's just nothing wrong with that even, looking that way. So then we also 
can take and then we can grab all of these dangles and feed them through our nice little lasso there and then voila and then this can pull up and down let me just kind of twist that a little bit and then so i'm trying to keep it in camera for you guys and then this anybody can wear this any way they want like you know you can pull this all the way up to where it's like a choker and so like this is all the way up on it like a choker and then the rest of this is just hanging down right or you know you could wear it where you know like this portion you know kind of like a 20 inch or so is on around the neck and then you can have the lasso there and the rest of this is hanging all the way down and again what's cool is that it'll move but it's not going it, it slides effortlessly however it's not like it's going to just constantly slide um, without, you know, specific intention, although it will in its natural way because of the bicones kind of catch it. So that's kind of cool. What's also really cool, guys, is you can go like this. Look, you know, you can put this around the neck and you can tie it. You know, you want to wear it like that, then wear it like that. There you go. Right? So, I mean, guys, how awesome. Snaps. Yay. What a fun hour I've had with you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that and had some fun hanging out and doing Friday Night Frolic with me or whenever you are going to watch this that you enjoy and see the video through. We had a lot of fun. I had some fun and I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe, the like, Give me your feedback and your comments. What do you think about um, my design choice here in terms of mixing up the metals and a um, amazing finished product, I think. Just an amazing finished product on a classic Lariat Lasso style that we can still do whatever we want to do with it when we wear it. Just a beauty. That's a beauty, you guys. Okay, friends, until next time, be blessed.